Why do we s observe the Sabbath on Sunday? Why not? Yeah. Um, so, quick history of the Sabbath, right? Um, God rested, we're told, on, uh, in Genesis chapter 1. But the Sabbath didn't come about until um, Exodus 33, when God took this, this Sabbath, this, this day of rest, and made it the sign of the Sinai covenant of Israel. And now from that moment on, it became not just a fact of what God did, but what God was calling his, his people Israel to do, I think, to represent the, the, the rest to which he wanted to call them as a people, to the promised land, et cetera, et cetera. Every day, every week, they were to come and take this one day to set it aside. Uh, it became a sign of, of the Sinai covenant. Um, I, every covenant, uh, right through to marriage, has a sign that's supposed to be a visible, ongoing representation of the inner spiritual realities of the covenant that the party makes. Um, when the church is born now, uh, and the Sabbath, of course, was, was Saturday for the, for the Jews, um, when the church comes along, Jesus is resurrected on Sunday. And so I think both to commemorate Jesus' resurrection, but nonetheless to keep continuity with a day set apart to honor God, they sort of morphed the whole thing. And so now uh, the Jewish Saturday Sabbath becomes the Sunday day of remembrance of the Lord's day, uh, the resurrection day, and you've kind of got this, this weird amalgam now. Um, I guess I would just want to point out that, that that's certainly fine. Uh, Paul doesn't seem to have any problem when he talks about days of, of, of setting aside, but he does say, don't make that a distinctive of yourself. Mm -hmm. Certain days or festivals or kind of foods you eat, don't let what sets you apart as people be the sorts of things that set the Jews apart. Rather, uh, let the sort of things that set you apart as a people be the kind of things that Jesus calls us to, which is really relational qualities. Loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, our neighbors, ourselves. Jesus boils, he says, all the 613 laws of the Old Testament down to those two. Um, I think the sign of the new covenant, uh, as Jesus describes it, is the Lord's Supper. Um, so uh, if you'd like to, and certainly traditionally Christians do kind of set aside a day to honor God, and it's usually the day we congregate, um, but that, that was never run that way uh, in terms of a, we've got to do the Sabbath the way the Jews do. I mean, look, if the Jews didn't do it, they were stoned to death. This was the sign of their covenant, uh, and to violate that was, was life or death. It's never treated that way uh, in, in the New Testament, I think, because there's a different covenant, a new covenant with a new sign and, and uh, the, the law of love to, to, that guides the whole thing. In Romans 14, Paul says, one person esteems one day above another, another person esteems every day to be alike. Let everyone follow their own conscience. In Colossians 2, he says, uh, you know, because of what Christ did, nailing our sins to the cross, defeating the powers and whatever, in verse 15 and 16, he says, therefore don't let anyone judge you as to festivals or holy days or Sabbaths or anything of the sort, and, and so it's really clear the New Testament makes this a non-issue. It's no longer functioning as that sign. And it's just as surprising that that issue keeps on coming back. You know, Saturday as opposed to Sunday. And I think the New Testament perspective is any day. In the early church, they met at, at, at times every day of the week. They met daily in each other's house, it said in Acts chapter 2. So the particular of the day, the, the principle of having rest is, is still a good one. But that's a principle. It's not a law. It's not a legality thing. Uh, and... Um, the sign of the covenant has changed, so it should be a non-issue now.